In this video, I'll be building the crossovers for the speakers that I made in the last video. And if you haven't seen that video, I recommend that you go and watch that, just so you'll know exactly what's going on here. There's a link in the description. As I go along, I'm going to talk a bit more about what a crossover actually does. But for now, I'll say that it's mainly made from two components. Those would be capacitors and inductors. And I bought a bunch of these many years ago when I was very much more into doing this. So instead of buying new parts, I'm going to be using what I already have. Now, the capacitors are no problem. I have the correct size for those, or at least close enough. But for the inductors or coils, all I have are these bigger ones. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to split these in two, actually, and make four coils from the two bigger ones. One problem is that I don't have an inductance meter. And there are other ways that I could measure it with an oscilloscope, which I have. But the setup time is a little bit of a turnoff. I think I can get a close approximation just by weighing it. And then I'm winding enough to make the smaller coil. So the coil is 256 grams, and the inductance of the coil is 2.2 millihenries, and the bigger coil that I need is 0.93 millihenries. And I'm sure that all of the math that's happening already is making your eyes glaze over, but it's actually pretty straightforward. These are just simple ratios. Now to wind the smaller coil, I made a form from scrap hardboard, and the slots that you see here are so that I can get zip ties in to tie up the coil before I take it off of the form. Or at least that was the idea. I also put a mark on the top of the coil to give me the approximate center, so I'll know when to stop. And then I made a simple jig to hold the coil while it unwinds onto the form. I'm not shooting for perfection at this point. All I'm looking for is something bigger than I need so that I can fine tune it by cutting some more off. Then I can put new zip ties on the original coil that I've got down to approximate size and do the same for the smaller coil that's wound onto the form. But here's where I ran into the problem and I actually ended up destroying the form trying to take it out. Not a big deal because it's easy enough to build a new one. And while I'm struggling with this, I'll talk a little bit more about what a crossover actually is. Basically, it divides the sound coming into the speaker into high and low and sends the high part of the signal to the tweeter and the low part to the woofer. And it does this by passing it through these combinations of inductors and capacitors. And specifically what I'm doing here is I'm building what's known as a second order link with Riley. And if you're interested in learning more about this, there's a link in the description to the build article with more detail. So here are the four coils that I've trimmed down to what I think is the right size. And the next thing that I need to do is make a board to mount these on. And I could use more of the hard board that I used to build the winding form. But I want something a little bit more impressive looking for this. So I'm going to use clear a quarter inch acrylic. Clear quarter inch acrylic. So I'm going to use some clear quarter inch acrylic instead. Try saying that five times rapidly. I did when I was trying to record this. Now I can lay the parts out on the board so I can get the spacing correct and mark the hole locations. And these holes are for more of the tie straps that'll hold these components in place. I also need some smaller holes for the terminals that I want to have on here. I'm going to drill those on the drill press and then tap them using just my handheld drill. And with all that done, I can peel off the protective paper and mount the first component. Now these coils are made from magnet wire and it has an insulating coating on there that's very tough. And usually a good way to get rid of that so I can make an electrical connection here is to burn it off. But my wimpy lighter doesn't have enough heat and sandpaper alone would take too long. So what I prefer to do is use a knife and just scrape off the majority of it and then clean off whatever is left over with the sandpaper. And I don't like to leave these uh, bare copper because it may corrode. So I'm going to coat it with solder, which is also known as tinning. And notice how the end is bent into a hook. That's so that I can attach it to the screw terminal. And I've also got some speaker wire here that I'm tinning the ends on. 
before I crush on the ring connectors that will fasten to the terminals as well. And even though building a board like this makes it look organized and pretty, I will admit that it's harder than it really needs to be, especially using these homemade screw terminals that I have here. It's more than a little bit tricky to line up all the parts and hold them in place while driving the screw at the same time, but it does get easier to practice and I do eventually get better at it just when the project is all done. Now I'm adding the capacitor, that's the second component in the low pass filter. And again, I'm using tie straps to fasten that to the board and I'll connect that directly to the woofer terminals. And that basically completes the low side of the crossover. And now I can move on to the high side, which looks pretty much exactly the same, but of course it does something completely different. And like I said, there's more detail in the build article if you're interested in learning more about this. Next, I can solder on the banana jacks that go in the back panel of the speaker. These come with nuts that hold them in place and I'm gonna snug those down finger tight only. And then I'm gonna squeeze some hot melt glue in to lock them in place and keep them from coming undone. Not the most elegant looking solution, but it's fast and effective and no one's gonna be able to see inside the box to point out just how shitty it looks. Wetting the end of your finger will keep the hot glue from burning your finger as you smooth it out. And then I can tin those leads and crush on some more of the ring connectors, but this time I'm using vice grips, which do a better job. And with those leads connected, I can drop it down inside the box and fasten it in place with four screws. To space it up off the back panel, I made my own standoffs from quarter inch plastic tubing that came with my water filter. And when I posted this on Instagram, I had a comment about heat buildup. And these components never get warm, let alone hot. So there's absolutely no risk when I completely cover them up and bury them in the stuffing material that I'm using for this, which is just regular wall insulation, fiberglass in fact. R20 cut to size and fit in there nicely. And what this stuff does is it damps some resonances and it also makes the interior of the box seem larger. And again, there's more detail on that particular piece of magic in the build article. We're nearly there, and the next step is to put the drivers in, starting with the tweeter, but first I have to make a gasket, and I cut that from some spongy material that I had. Normally I use weather stripping tape for this, but I didn't have any, but this will work. And then I connected the wires coming up from the high side of the crossover to the terminals on the tweeter, just soldering those on and checking to make sure that they're strong enough. And then of course I can drop it into the hole, line up the screw holes and dry the screws. And it's the same deal for the woofer, solder on the leads and screw it in place. And that finishes the first one. And before I start on the next one, I thought I would do a quick test to see how it sounds. My setup here is not audiophile quality. I'm playing an MP3 through my old laptop, out through the headphone jack, and into my old Yamaha home theater receiver. And I'm recording all of the sound with the microphone that I'm holding. And I didn't do any post-processing on it whatsoever. Now I know that this demonstration that I'm doing here won't count for a whole lot since a lot of you will be watching this on your cell phone, but it does give you a rough idea what this sounds like. I was stuck with using music from the YouTube library, but I picked out ones that I think that most people have heard before. 